Hi everyone! In this short video I want to talk about the power of layout previews. The storyline is fairly short and to the point. We'll first see why previews are important, then we'll investigate how we can make layout previews work. Why? Apps consist out of several screens that achieve a particular purpose. For instance, in Gmail you have the ability to compose a new email message or to read an email that you received. And where apps may have been single purpose five years ago, they are increasingly getting more and more features such as the setting screens or others. This also translates itself into the app wireframes. They used to only consist out of a few screens, but nowadays apps can really be quite complex. I've personally worked on apps with even more than 400 different screens. With apps getting increasingly more complex, it can sometimes be very challenging to find back the right screen. Or to figure out from source code what's, what each screen does and how you navigate towards that screen. And can you even imagine if you're new to a code base? How can you start making sense of what screens exist and what they do? This can be especially tricky because some screens might only pop up under very special circumstances like an error case, a specialized flow, or a particular region. But when there are clear layout previews for each screen, it's usually pretty clear to figure out what's going on. This doesn't just help in understanding what each screen does, but thanks to the Android navigation components, you can even create powerful visual graphs, much like wireframes that designers make. This dramatically makes your code base easier to understand, especially when combined with a feature-based modularization. So, let's look at an example and see how we can make maintenance easier by adding good layout previews. For this, we'll use the open source Transferize for Banks reference application, an Android app that I worked on some time back. You can check out all of the source code for yourself at the bit.ly link on below. The navigation graph looks pretty interesting, but it isn't terribly useful due to the lack of layout previews. Let's investigate two of the worst offenders in this example. To choose a currency and select a recipient screen. Both of these just show standard recycler view layout previews, which doesn't really say much. But how can Android Studio know what previews to show for these? Recycler views always have their content set at runtime, and in most cases, this content is even dynamic or comes from some kind of backend. So, in order to generate a layout preview, we'll have to tell Android Studio what to show. This can be done using the tool's namespace. This allows to define attributes that are only used by the Android Studio design editor. None of the tool's attributes you define will have any impact on the runtime behavior of your app. And using this tool's attribute, we can specify the list item that should be displayed. Just one line of code extra. But it makes our previews look quite a bit better already. Now at least we know both screens aren't identical. However, we are still missing quite a lot of information. Like how is the currency actually being displayed? And it doesn't look anything close to the real screen yet either. So let's edit the list items for the currency. Again, we use tools prefix to define an image, currency name and code to be displayed. Notice how most tools attributes directly match the regular Android XML attributes. Oh my. Now we're really starting to get an idea of how currencies are being displayed. Let's also add some static data to the select recipient screen. Again, we're going to edit the list item for the recipient screen. And add the tools attribute to set the relevant text and background tints. Here you go. Our screens are now starting to look closer to the real thing. We are definitely getting somewhere but the effect isn't quite how the screen would look when the app is running. So let's try to make things more interesting and provide some dynamic information. In order to do that, we'll create a new directory called sample data, 
under the root of our module. And in here, we provide a JSON file that will hold the sample data. The sample data file isn't all that complicated, especially not if you're already familiar with JSON. Notice how we are defining two top-level attributes, currencies and recipients, which are JSON arrays that can hold multiple different JSON objects. And both of these arrays contain objects with predefined sample data. For currencies, these objects show a name, code, and link to a drawable for the flag. These drawables, however, must be placed in a very, very specific folder structure. But once you put them into that folder, you can reference them via add sample syntax. Now that we have all of our sample data set up for both currencies and recipients, it's time to start using these in our list items. And instead of referencing a hard-coded value in the tools attributes, we now use the add sample prefix followed by the name of our JSON file, followed by the path to the attribute. Similarly, we can do the same for the recipients. And this all yields the following results. We get a very realistic layout preview for the real screens, complete with a custom image and even color tinting. This makes the final result look very much to the real app. So let's wrap things up. A picture says more than a thousand words. You can use the tools attributes to define attributes that will only be used by the Android Studio Design Editor. And you can even create your custom sample data to provide dynamic behavior for your screens. If you like this content, feel free to check out my blog at yourroomwalls.com slash blog. I regularly write about interesting Android stuff. The image credits are also important. I didn't make these beautiful images myself so credit goes to the others. And that was it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to follow me on Twitter to learn more about Android.